uh, in France. I'm not speaking from Mexico, but I will present some of my uh, project there. So this project we started uh, over a year ago. Uh, so it's trying really to build a community, a network between people, um, scientists around the world, for them to develop, to develop their own uh, geo-heritage initiative in order to share knowledge, ra raise awareness and communicate, communicate about natural hazards. So mo most of us basically are, are volcanologists, so we've been working a lot on volcanoes from a scientific point of view, but we are interested in sharing this knowledge. And, and for this geo-heritage, it's a, it's, it's a very good way we want to, to enhance that. So as a brief introduction, um, geology is, is, a, is a real part of nature that often people dismiss and it's really poorly understood. It's a complex subject um, to be understood by people, but we need to do more. Um, it, it is very important because uh, first fauna and flora depend on it. We are all, it's all part of one earth. It also provides us basic resources that we need. Um, so it's important for sustainability but it does have a lot of negative impacts. So it causes natural hazards. And uh, in places where you have a lot of people, these hazards create risk and they may lead to disasters. So we are vulnerable to uh, geology, to geological processes. And uh, people need to understand more all these, these links. Sorry, um, okay, next. So what is a uh, geoheritage and how that links with site? Geoheritage helps uh, protect value, the geological elements we care for, so that mostly geoconservation, uh, but it also help protecting other related uh, natural elements, biodiversity, uh, pedodiversity, and improves our resilience to these, um, these uh, negative impacts of these elements, so it helps for risk management, disaster reduction. Uh, so we've seen many uh, projects based on geo-heritage, such as geoparks that strongly benefit communities. So they help them um, just use their resources in a sustainable way, develop uh, geotourism and also tools for education. And I think the most important, they strengthen the links between different members of the society such as politics, scientists, people. Uh, in some way, geoheritage is the link between the society and the earth, right? And one example uh, I've found to show that very clearly um, is this logo on the right side. This logo was made by the um, Japan, uh, Geopark in Japan. So they, they used, they modified their logo um, to symbolize this social dis distancing that we experience these days. So they really a link of geoparks with the communities and a way to interact with society. So what about uh, geohazards and resilience? So earth processes impact human activity, creating geohazards, such as earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic activity, flooding, drought, subsidence, a lot more. They threaten an increasing part of the world population, uh, because of the growth of cities and also change in climate. However, people understand very little about geology and the causes of these hazards. And what geoheritage can help is us to elaborate stories of the earth, scientifically valid stories that help to prepare the people uh, in front of these hazards. So on the right side, uh, side you can see the painting of Pele, the goddess of uh, Hawaiian volcanoes. Uh, there was a, there is a lot of legends um, around volcanoes, for example, and that's a way people have found to tell stories to understand better uh, what these uh, volcanoes are. But now we need to create stories that have a fundamental meaning and can really help people um, survive, you no, know, and live well in uh, active volcanic areas, for example. So what's this project? Um, it's the first UNESCO International Geosciences Program in Geoheritage. Uh, it aims to identify, develop geoheritage projects in areas which are impacted by geohazards, have a high geo risk. Uh, our approach is really bottom up, so we want to involve the local scientists. They know better their place, 
Uh, they know better the local community. They can interact with all these people. It's age and gender balance. On top right, you see a lot of pretty young ladies. Uh, we want to be modern. We use, want to use digital tools. So we're trying to um, use 3D virtual reality. Uh, by now, we are mainly focused on active volcanic areas, but the same um, project could be expanded to other areas. And we have some limited budget. The idea is really to build this network and help people. So where are our projects? Uh, here are just only some partners. Uh, that are presenting actually to this conference. I'm uh, really proud that we have so many people presenting here. So uh, here the map of the earthquakes and volcanoes. So our projects are mostly located in active areas such as the Philippines, uh, New Zealand. We have a strong uh, community of people working in Latin America from Mexico down to Peru. Um, we are here, uh, our boss is from Clermont-Ferrand where I am at the moment in the old continent up there. And we also work in people from Hungary, Czech Republic, and uh, we have a project in Ethiopia. So we are quite uh, global in our, uh, in our community, uh, 14 countries uh, in, in high, uh, very active uh, areas. So we first met with a few partners. We can't meet all at the same place. It's complicated. We met in Colombia in October for a workshop that was organized uh, by the UNESCO, Global Geoparks, and that was very timely because the geopark, uh, they were uh, building, they are building a proposal to make a geopark in Nevado del Riz. So this is a um, very active volcano and it has a strong lead with geohazards. So that's really important for our project. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, the volcano had a relatively small eruption in 1985 that, however, buried the whole city with La Haz or Mertlo. There was a lot of fatalities, probably the worst avoidable disaster uh, relative to volcanic activity. It could have been avoided by evacuation. The scientists predicted this would happen, but there was a lack of stress, bad communication, and fortunate circumstances that led to this disaster. Um, now it's crucial to preserve testimony to avoid new disaster. People are very eager to go back there to build again, and unfortunately, the lesson, the effect can happen again. So there was, a, there is a lot of um, uh, will, good will by uh, Colombian scientists to build a geopark there. So what about Chile? Uh, That's my uh, field area. So we are in Mexico City. So that's a highly populated basin with a high geohazard. So we have volcanoes, earthquakes, flooding. Uh, we have many issues of uh, sustainability as um, top uh, developing countries, a lot of problems. And what is a Shitle volcano? It had, is uh, the youngest eruption so close to the city, um, except the active uh, stratovolcano there. And this eruption has a strong link with the city. It destroyed uh, the early city that was in the basin and left a pyramid sticking out of the lava, which is a clear evidence for this um, impact. But now the lavas, they provide a wide range of benefits to the city. They have biodiversity, they, they are a water source. They also mitigate earthquakes and flooding. Um, and they are here for aesthetics, identity, um, Chitle lava is very important to the city, but people do not know it. Uh, so we see a, a picture here on a painting uh, that is exposed that shows the, the uh, probable effect of the eruption on, on the people. There is no icon, there is no evidence for this. Um, we see also the lavas are uh, the ground for a very unique ecosystem in this region, and they also relate to art. There's very important uh, buildings built uh, with uh, blocks from the lavas. Um, so the sheet lavas are very important also in Mexico City because they host the uh, campus of the National University. So this uh, is not a small university, it's the largest in Latin America, have more than 200,000 students. Uh, it's a world heritage site, but for ar architecture and culture, very important buildings. Um, and what people don't know is that 
there we have the last remnants of the Chitle lava and the city. So we, are clear, we have a clear opportunity there to raise awareness on geohazards and environmental sustainability. So what can we do? Well, we started looking around and found this very nice um, geosite, which was not recognized as such. Um, in the GeoPedregal is a project that was uh, created in the campus. It's basically an outcrop of lava, which was transformed into a small park managed by biologists, pedologists. And um, the main objective there was to teach people about ecology, how to preserve the environment, uh, how to introduce endemic species and, and maintain them in the area. So it has a lot of school visits, cultural events, photographic expositions. And our project here is to integrate this geological information to these activities. We because we have different landforms in the lava, we have a clear uh, area to show what the lava is and to uh, raise awareness in the population. And it also forces us to do interdisciplinary work. So we have to work with scientists on different specialities, and I think this is really good, uh, even for on a richer research way. So what about other projects around? Um, in the next few days, we'll have talk um, by many uh, participants, partners of this project. Uh, for example, in Arequipa, Arequipa in Peru, uh, where you will uh, get to know uh, how we can, we may evolve quarrymen uh, that can become really geo guys and help mitigate the hazards in this city. Uh, we also have a project in Nometepe, uh, where in this case, we're looking at the complex socio-ecological socio system that um, gets involved in the area and how, how to integrate people into a geopark initiative. We have also many talks in uh, urban geosites, so in cities uh, such as Clermont-Ferrand, Tal, Philippines, Auckland, which we have just heard uh, half an hour ago. So how geo heritage can thrive in city? How can, can it survive and use and be used by the city? How can it help people prepare for hazards? Um, and we have also a paper in review for a project in Dalol, Ethiopia, it's a very different setting, uh, where in this case, risk management can, can be coupled with geo heritage and can help also sensibilize uh, the people. So in conclusion, what the, our project, it provides scientists with tools to engage with society, support local communities. We really want to get to the bottom of the people there in, in the areas. It gives meaning also to our research, monitoring work as, I, as scientists. It also motivates us to do in-depth studies of places that have a high relevance for society that we may not have identified first as an object of research, but that may become, no? uh, and we may discover new things. It feeds a lot of interdisciplinary, international work. We want to relate to as many people as possible. And finally, over it, it empowers us, G gives us the power to maybe do something for society. So I think that's very important. And I encourage you, encourage you sorry, to meet. Uh, enjoyed, or we are created a, a, a team of geopowers and we are uh, holding our next uh, virtual meeting, of course, next next week. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Marie Noël. Wonderful, wonderful talk. And a reminder to everyone to put their questions on the chat to to get us started off. I'll uh, I'll ask a question. You uh, talked about all different elements of this project from around the world. Um, when it comes to the issues around using geoheritage to communicate geohazards and things like that, do you sense that the answers will be specific to different countries in different cultures, or are there some lessons we can learn and apply in all sorts of places? Um, from our first meeting, I think we have issues that, are, uh, that we are uh, similar to many different countries. Um, for example, the Latin American community, uh, we think we have things in common in between countries. Um, but that's, you know, that's the important way of engaging local scientists. 
they are like uh, local every uh, place has a different uh, setting right different issues um, different law, laws we, we also from Jose Bria talked about these different conservation laws so we, we can't ignore these and and this is very important to get with local people who know better about how to how to do that how to manage these issues and we have a question from Estefania who asks are other geohazards included in the geo heritage for resilience UNESCO program for example earthquakes um, at the moment we are mostly our groups of group of work is mostly uh, volcanologists that's how we we met and we got to know each other um, but we could incorporate any any different um, issue about geohazard is is really not a, a problem we want to help with each other and and communicate share and and do the most we can I, is that okay uh, yes there is a another question here from philippe who asks um how i think he's asking how are the shitle lavas a source for water for the city Okay, it's it's not used yet as a source of water. The, what happens is a very young lava, so it's not covered by soil. So the the rain just uh, infiltrates right through in the lava, and it so the lava becomes a storage for this water. And so at the at the bottom of the hill, because the lava, I didn't go to the details. The lava come uh, flows down the valley. Um, it gets into the basin, so we have many springs emerging at the limit of the of the lava down down flow. Let's say so that's very common. Um, we we do not really see the springs in the city, but they're there. When they have a construction work, often they find suddenly what's happening. We have water getting out of this, so people are not aware of this. But and it's clearly mostly contaminated now, right? Have more than six. 600,000 people living on the lavas, um, but it's, it's still a source of water that is there in a very dry area, and it has not been really used. Excellent. We At that point, we must move on, but we thank you again, and we note that there is um, lots of interest in the chat, including uh, people requesting to become part of your network. There's people from well, Costa Rica. Well, just um, so. send an email. We can collaborate we, we are open to all thank you very much wonderful wonderful bringing people together in these testing times just a reminder every presenting author's email address is on the um, abstract volume so you can download that from the website and get everyone's emails if you're interested in speaking to a presenter thank you once more marie noel 